My name is Jonathan Hicks. We're doing 3D shapes. Now I'm assuming you've watched the 2D shapes video already. You need to be familiar with squares and circles and rectangles and things like that before you can really get your head around this. We're going to talk about the famous or important 3D shapes and just explain what makes them what they are. So we'll talk about cubes and spheres and pyramids and some of the less common things like tetrahedrons and I'll explain what it is that makes a tetrahedron a tetrahedron. So the first one we'll look at is a cube. Now a cube is like a square that's been stretched back into 3D. So if we draw a square first of all, then you have to kind of extend it back into 3D. So it looks something like that. So a cube will have six sides and each of these sides, including the ones around the back, are squares. So every face, as we call it, every side of a cube is a square. And so each of those sides will have the same properties that a square does. So there are 90 degree angles in all the corners and all the lengths around a cube are the same. Next one then will be a cuboid. A cuboid is a rectangle that's been stretched back into 3D. So if we draw a rectangle, and again we can then extend that back into 3D, something like that. Now, each of the sides on a cuboid are rectangles. You can have squares on either end, you don't have to. I mean, a square is a special kind of rectangle. So you could take a cube and stretch it out to get a cuboid, or you could just put rectangles on each of the sides. Um, either would be fine. The key thing is that the opposite faces, as we call them, the opposite sides, are going to be the same shape. So the rectangle shape that's there will be exactly the same on the back. The rectangle shape on the top will be the same as the rectangle on the bottom, and the rectangle on this right-hand side will be the same as the rectangle behind, as it were, on the left-hand side. So that's what makes a cuboid a cuboid. It's got six sides and they're all rectangles, with opposite faces being the same. Next one then is a sphere. I should say, by the way, sometimes people will call this an oblong. Effectively, it's a cardboard box shape, but usually you call it a cuboid. A sphere you'll be familiar with is just a ball. Uh, these are hard to draw. Let me draw something like that to make it ball-like. And there's not a lot you can say about it. It's round. It has a center, and if you imagine sort of drawing a line to the outside, then the distance from the center to the outside of the sphere, if you can see what I'm trying to draw here, um, would be the radius of the sphere, yeah, the distance from the middle to the edge. Um, but that's a sphere. Our next one then is a cone. Now a cone, a bit like an ice cream cone, uh, it's got a round curvy side and then at the bottom if I sort of draw what's behind here there's a circle at the bottom so it's kind of made up of a circle flat bit and then the pointy cone bit and it's round all the way around yeah it's not a triangle it looks like a triangle at first glance but it's actually it curves all the way around um, and if you were to take that curvy shape around the outside and lay it out flat you're actually going to get what's called a sector of a circle i.e. if you were to draw a circle and then cut out a wedge of pi from that circle like that so if we get rid of everything around there this is known as a sector technically sector of a circle and that's the shape that goes around the outside so if you wanted to make a cone you could draw that on a bit of paper draw a circle attached to it, cut them out, and they would fold up into a cone shape. Technically, that's what you call the net of a cone. So just be aware, the thing around the outside of a cone is not a triangle, it's a sector of a circle. All right, so that's cones. Uh, next up, we're going to look at some prisms. Now, there's a whole variety of different prisms here. So we'll start with a triangular prism. That's one of the most common ones. So triangular prism. Now, any prism at all is essentially a 2D shape on the end that's then been stretched back out into 3D. So if we have a triangular prism, then you're going to have a triangle of some kind on the end. As I say, it gets stretched back into 3D like that. So a sort of tent shape, I suppose. 
Uh, a lot of people will think of this as a Toblerone, the popular chocolate. The box comes in a triangular prism shape. But essentially you've got a triangle that sort of extends all the way back, all the way through. If you chop a triangular prism in half and then sort of look at the two ends, then the bits inside will be triangle shapes as well. And they'll be exactly the same triangle shapes as the triangles on either end of the triangular prism. And that's true for all prisms. So actually a cuboid is a kind of prism. It's a rectangular prism. Usually we just call it a cuboid, but it's a rectangle which goes all the way back. If you chop it in half and then look on the inside, you'll see the same rectangle shape on the inside as you do on the end. This shape, when you chop it in half and look on the inside, is sometimes called the cross-sectional area. When you chop a shape in half, like the triangular prism, then you're taking a cross-section of that shape, and that shape that's inside is the cross-sectional area. It's the same as the area of the triangle on the end, though. So if you want to find the cross-sectional area of something, a prism at least, you usually just find the area of the thing on the end. So that would be a triangular prism. Uh, the next one would be, well, I, I say you can do this with all kinds of shapes. So if I just give you one example, if you had a hexagonal prism, it's going to be exactly the same idea, except instead of having a triangle on the end, you can have a hexagon on the end. And these are a bit harder to draw. So there's a hexagon, six-sided shape. And then if I extend that back into 3D, you're going to get whoop, something like that. So that will be a hexagonal prism, but same idea, hexagon extends back into 3D. Next type then will be a cylinder. Now a cylinder is actually another kind of prism. It's a circular prism. You have a circle on the end and then we extend it back into 3D. So it's got another circle on the other end. Um, obviously you can stand it up, in which case you tend to draw it more like this. Think of a tin of baked beans or something but that would be a cylinder shape. So you've got a circle on the end which goes all the way through. If you chop it in half and look at the centre, you're going to see circles. The same circle here. So the cross-sectional area of a cylinder will be the same as the area of the circle on the end. So that's a cylinder. Next one up then is a pyramid. Now these are just like the Egyptian pyramids. So they've got a square on the base. That's the main thing you need to be aware of here. And these are a little bit tricky to draw and come around here. So, if we draw it like that, so it's hard to see this. Now, to make it clear that this has got a square on the base, I'm going to sort of draw what's behind it with dashed lines, a bit like on the cone. So this is going to come across to here, and this one comes up to there. So that's like the base, and then that side corner will go up to there. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a square on the bottom and then it's got four sides that go up to a point. And each of these sides will be triangles. And in general, all of those will be the same. So they each be the same kind of triangle around the side. Sometimes this is called a square-based pyramid and that's to distinguish it from a triangular-based pyramid. But a triangular-based pyramid is normally called a tetrahedron. So the next thing then, or the last one we're going to do, tetrahedron, as I say, is a triangular-based pyramid. So at first glance, it looks a lot like this. So you're going to have one side, well, you're going to have like a triangle on the front here. And then they usually draw something out the side there. But the idea is it's only got a triangle at the bottom. Although it looks very similar to this, the behind is just going to go like that. It's hard to see these, but you've got a triangle on that side, a triangle there, and another triangle sort of on the back to the left here. So there's just three sides that go up to a point, and there's a triangle shape on the bottom. So you just need to be careful distinguishing between these two. So a pyramid, a traditional pyramid, has got a square at the bottom. It's a square-based pyramid. A tetrahedron is a triangular-based pyramid. There's a triangle on the bottom, and then the three sides, three triangles, go up to a point at the top. Alright, so those are the 3D shapes you should be aware of. I'm doing another video for volume where I'll show you how to find the volume of all these different shapes, but those are just the ones you, as I say, should be familiar with.